Hello and welcome to Mystery Made Known, primers about all things Jesus and the Gospel. In this video, we will be considering the new beginning that the resurrection of Jesus has begun and how it transforms our lives right here, right now. Some years ago, I asked a group of young people what they knew about Easter, what they understood about the death and resurrection of Jesus. As we talked about it, one of them suddenly said out loud, you mean he's still alive? I realised that that person accepted that Jesus had died and then risen from the dead, but thought that he must have died since then somehow. This story and many others highlights to me a common lack of clarity about the death and the resurrection of Jesus, a lack of understanding that I'm passionate about addressing. So buckle up for the best news of your life, the news about a new beginning for your life. So what's it all about? Well, let's start with the cross. What has it achieved for you and for me? Well, the Bible tells us this. God has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation. And then elsewhere it says, for by one sacrifice, Jesus has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. So the Bible teaches us that through faith in Jesus, we're totally forgiven, utterly cleansed of and freed from slavery to the effects of sin in our lives, forever made right and reconciled to our Creator God, adopted as His children and given an everlasting inheritance well beyond our wildest imaginations. A new hope, a new future, a new destiny, a new life, a new beginning. But this is not all. The blessings of the cross are really just the beginning of the new beginning. The cross is just the entry point into a totally new life. The Bible says through faith in Jesus, we both participate in his death on the cross, but also participate in his resurrection from the grave. And so through faith, we are dead to sin and alive in Jesus. The Bible says this, just as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Elsewhere it's written, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone and the new is here. And the amazing thing is that this new life, this new beginning clearly takes place in the here and now through faith in Jesus. Certainly there is more and better to come, but there is much blessing for the here and now. Just listen to some of the blessings for life in the here and now through faith in Jesus. I can do all things through Jesus who gives me strength. And God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. In Jesus, I have rest for the soul, a peace that the world cannot give, complete joy. But most of all, I have what the human life and existence is all about, the love of God in Jesus poured into my heart through his Holy Spirit. In fact, through bearing the fruit of the Holy Spirit of God within my life, my life can be characterised by love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. And most importantly, absolutely nothing, no circumstances, no event, no situation can rob me of this unless, unless I allow it to.
This, of course, doesn't mean that my life will be hassle-free. Jesus said, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I've overcome the world. What it does mean is that I don't have to allow circumstances to determine how I live, but rather allow the finished work of Jesus to determine how I live. I'm no longer enslaved to the normal human responses to the situations that life throws my way. I can now respond according to the new life in Jesus. A common problem is that many people never get beyond the cross. They never follow Jesus out of the grave and walk in the new life that he has made available. They simply continue to accept the conventional human responses to life as if they're normal for the Christian life. Such thinking projects most, if not all, of the benefits of the new life in Jesus into the future, expecting them to relate to and to be received in the life after death. Let's take a look at a graphic that might help us understand all this a bit better. So a grave or a tomb is all about death. It represents and contains death, so to speak. But in terms of Jesus and the gospel, it is also about sin, which ultimately leads to death. And so we can say that the grave is also the place that represents all of the dark, caustic characteristics of human life without Jesus. The things that Jesus dealt with through his death and resurrection. So in no particular order, and not an exhaustive list, here are some of the things. Hate, lust, guilt, unforgiveness, shame, fear, anxiety, pride, jealousy, envy, hurt, offence, slavery, worry, low self-esteem. But because they're attached and associated to death, Jesus overcame them and left them in the grave where they belong. New life in Jesus means following him out of the grave to pursue the life in all of its fullness that he came to give us. We cannot follow Jesus by staying in the grave, by continuing to accept fallen human behaviour as the norm for our lives. On that Easter morning, normal human life met new resurrection life. Twice in John's Gospel, the question is asked of Mary Magdalene, woman, why are you crying? First by the angels, then by Jesus himself. You see, she was still participating in the old human responses to circumstances, fear, worry, anxiety and hurt. But Jesus shakes her out of it. It is no coincidence that he is seen as the gardener in the garden on the first day of the week. We're meant to see the second Adam tending the new creation garden of Eden on the first day of new creation. So, while the cross provokes sensitivity to our weaknesses and the colossal price Jesus paid to deal with them forever, the empty grave provokes our sensitivity to the strength of his new life in us to be successfully walked out through faith, hope and love. And we can all do this because he says we can and calls us to walk it out. So I wonder how you understand the implications of Jesus' death and resurrection for your life, what Easter is really all about. We haven't even considered the blessings of Jesus' future return, the new heaven and the new earth that we'll inhabit for eternity, forever free of all evil, pain and suffering. That'll have to wait to another time. I've only skimmed the surface here, but I hope that I've shown that following Jesus requires giving equal attention to the empty grave as well as to the cross. So, I pray that you will be able to grow in your understanding of what the cross and the empty grave means for your life. I pray that this will progressively draw you into the life that turns away from the characteristics of fallen human life and into the fruit of the new life outside of the grave. I pray that you will indeed embrace and enter into your new beginning through faith in Jesus.